Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Busy Moms Fitness Nutrition Mindset and Accountability Community. I am super excited for today's call. As you know, for some of you who have been here a while, you've seen some changes this week as it is relaunch week. For those of you who are brand new to this group, I want to let you know that this time, this place, this Zoom link is what is going to be used every single Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every single Thursday, I go live in this group through Zoom. I encourage you to take advantage of that Zoom link right up above me in Facebook. Click it and jump into the Zoom room with me. The reason I encourage that is because you are going to get the most out of these calls. You are going to learn the most and you're going to be able to implement the most and move yourself forward to see results if you are able to jump in these calls and participate. If you're not able to, because I get noon is a weird time for moms. You guys are getting kids down for naps. You guys are trying to get lunch ready. I know it's not the most ideal time. That being said, if you are here on Facebook and you're like, I can only listen or I can only watch the replay, drop hashtag live or hashtag replay in the comments and follow along, ask questions, introduce yourself. Who are you and where are you from? We've got people from all over the country in this group and I love seeing how many people are in the same area. We got two people, at least two people from Missouri in here. Um, and I think before this, I didn't know really anybody from Missouri. So take, a, take some time to drop hashtag live or hashtag replay here in the comments and let us know who you are and where you're from. As this is La Relaunch Week, kind of our vision and our mission and who this group is for has changed. So I'm gonna share that. This group is for busy moms who are looking to shed some physical and mental weight while adding intentional movement into their lives to help prevent aches and pains and to make them stronger. We also focus on nutrition in this group. We focus not on calorie counting or macro counting. Yeah, those are topics that are touched on, but those are not sustainable long-term. So we look at and we teach ways to help moms create balanced lifestyles, a balanced diet and a balanced lifestyle that works for them and the kids and the husband or whoever else is in the family. Because you guys, there's no sense in making multiple meals. Let's make a meal. Let's find a balanced diet that works for everyone. In addition, you guys are going to be held accountable. We create action in this group. So often we get caught in learning, 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 learning. And we don't ever take action. We cannot actually move ourselves forward towards our goals and see results until we take action on the things we learn. So every single week that you participate or every single time you watch one of these replays or you jump into the Zoom room, I really want you to think about what is one thing I'm going to pull away from this call and how am I going to implement it? And if you put it in the comments or you speak it in one of these Zoom rooms, I will hold you accountable. I will follow up with you in a week and say, hey, you know that thing you're supposed to be doing? How'd it go? And you may say, oops, I forgot. Or you may say it's been successful. I will be following up with you. I also, this group grows by invitations and invites into this group. And I want to thank Rachel Herman and Sarah Pierce for inviting people into this group just within this last week. Thank you so much. As this group grows, we can all connect with one another. We can all learn and we can all take action and grow together. We like to celebrate wins, but we also like to be honest about the struggles that are happening and figure out how to get around them and how to make them seem less awful. So as we get into today, we are going to be talking about strength training and how to keep it simple. Before I get into the how, I like to share the why, and I'm going to be sharing a PDF here with you shortly. Um, we're not going to go through the whole PDF. I am going to attach it in the comments of this training. So if you want to print it off and have it for your own reference, you are more than welcome to. Um, it is from the American College of Sports Medicine. That is who my personal training certification is through. That's who um, uh, Central Michigan University, that's the curriculum that they taught. Um, and that is where I graduated from. And I find it to be a super helpful um, PDF. So some of us, we just are told we need to do strength training. I'm going to tell you the why and the how in this group. It's not just going to be do what I say. I want you to understand why. Why is it important? Because if you don't understand why, you're probably not going to do it. So with that being said, I'd love for you guys to all drop in the comments. Let me know who you are and where you're from. And are you currently doing strength training in your week? 
If so, roughly how often or how much are you doing? For, I'll, I'll share who I am because some of you guys you may not know and I don't think I actually said this in the vision and uh, pillars video yesterday and the day before I'm Morgan Ekovich I'm the owner of get fit with me I started my own business back in 2020 this Facebook group started back in February 2021 and I am a virtual personal trainer health and accountability coach I help busy moms learn how to create the lifestyle they love without having to give up the things they love and I strength train uh, at least two to three times a week for 20 to 30 minutes. And that's going to lead us right into the benefits of strength training. So before I show this PDF, I'm going to share some of the benefits that I see and that I can tell with my body and my mood and my mind and all of those things. So strength training, something that some of you may know or you may not know, is when you strength train, sometimes you may not burn as many calories in the moment of strength training. Whereas if you go out and you do cardio, you're going to burn a lot more probably in the moment. Well, strength training, although you don't burn as many in the moment, you're going to burn more long term and later in the day. Whereas cardio, you burn more up front and less throughout the day. So if you're somebody who's kind of in that transition or you're trying to figure out the metabolism, we want to we want to focus on strength training. Not just because it's going to help us burn more calories later in the day, but it, the more strength that we can have, the faster the metabolism is going to be, in a sense. So one of the benefits that I see is I can lift shit. I can pick things up. I can move stuff. And I don't need help. I have a little portable treadmill. It probably weighs about 150 pounds. I was able to pick that thing up and put that in my car about a week ago. Like, I, before strength training on a regular basis, I was never able to do that. I was the person that you never wanted to move with. They'd be like, okay, lift the couch. I'd like lift the couch and then I'd be exhausted. I'm like, okay, we got to take a break. Now, I, I am strong and I love the feeling of being strong physically. Also with strength training, I feel more capable of doing things for myself. Not that I have to do things for myself, but I'm able to. When it comes to that mood and that mindset area, strength training is an awesome release for me. Really any sort of exercise, it helps clear my mind. It helps bring me back into my work every single day. I can tell when I haven't strength trained because I feel kind of all over the place um, and kind of ping pong ballish. It helps bring me back to center. For some of you, you may not ever feel those results and you may not feel that way because that's my personal experience with it. But if you are someone who's strength trained, I would love to hear what, what do you love about it? Why do you love strength training? Why do you incorporate it? Minus all the health benefits, obviously. But why do you actually love it? I love it because I just feel strong and I feel capable and I feel freaking powerful. And I want each of you to feel that way. So as you're dropping that in the comments, I am going to get a little close here. I have my setup for my group fitness classes that I teach twice a week. Um, and all that means is when I'm close to the screen, I'm really close because normally I stand way back here and that's where most of today's training is going to happen is way back here. So the PDF I'm going to share with you, if you are watching on your cell phone, I suggest turning your phone to the side because you're going to be able to see this better than if it's upright. Um, so share screen. And like I said, this is from the American College of Sports Medicine. Resistance training for health. We're not going to go through all of this, but this is an awesome resource to have on hand. Take a screenshot, save it to your camera roll, or uh, print it out, whatever you prefer. Key psychological benefits of resistance training. Muscle, strength, endurance, and power. Bone, muscle, and connective tissue growth and durability. Women, we are prone to have osteoporosis as we age. Strength training and putting stress on those bones in a way that is controlled, such as strength training and resistance training, actually makes those bones stronger and will lessen our likelihood to have osteoporosis. So it's super important for that aspect and that longevity. It helps with communication between our brain and our muscles. It's super important when it comes to balance. If we are not strong, our balance is probably all over the place. But if I'm strong and I'm stable, my balance is strong and stable. 
We have, it helps regulate our blood glucose, which is those sugar. So if you have a lot of sugar spikes, strength training helps with that. Some things that can help manage and treat arthritis, cancers, cardiovascular disease, dementia, depression, diabetes, risk fall, um, hypertension, insomnia, low back pain. This list could go on and on. And that's why I'm gonna share this with you is the reason this is important is yes, it feels awesome to be strong and powerful. Yes, it feels awesome to be able to have a clear head. But if I look at this, these reduce, reducing my risk of these things I've highlighted, that is what matters to me. I don't want to be on medication. I don't want to fall in, in I don't want to fall into a category where I have a chronic disease. Or maybe you have a chronic disease and you want to get out of it. Strength training is going to help you get out of there. So like I said, I will drop this in the comments. If you have any questions on it, let me know. Um, I'm happy to answer any of them. I'm going to stop share. So as we move into today's training, I was doing some research and I always like to see what the new research is when it comes to strength training. And the newest thing that I found, which has been pretty consistent over the last 10 ish years is two to three days a week of strength training is optimal for 20 to 30 minutes at a time. Some of you may be thinking <laughs> that's not happening. I'm just going to turn you off Morgan. If that's how, if that's what you're going to talk about, it's not what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about how we can take that two to three days for 20 to 30 minutes, which, yeah, if you can dedicate that time, you are going to see the best results, the fastest, and you're going to feel the best. But I get that does not work. We cannot always manage our time. We cannot always plan for what's going to happen every day in life without our control. So instead of focusing on those two to three days for 20 to 30 minutes, I want you to focus on daily for no more than 10 minutes at a time. Reason being, strength training is something that you can kind of break up. I, In a perfect world, we have that designated time where Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we go to the gym for 20 to 30 minutes, we strength train. I'm going to be honest, that does not always happen for me. But I look at it as, what can I do with a 10-minute timer? And I'm going to be showing you guys three circuits today. And we call these AMRAPs, as many rounds as possible is what it stands for. And some of you may know what these are already. Some of you may be like, I have no idea. And that's okay. The goal of this, though, is to set a timer for 10 minutes and to complete a circuit that is in front of you. And like I said, I have three circuits we're going to run through today here, is to complete the circuit as many times as you can in that 10 minutes. When it is an AMRAP, what that also means is there's no designated rest time or break time. So that forces you to pace yourself or to take rest as you need to, which sometimes I work with a lot of women and we just like to move things through and get things done quick. It's gonna force you to, if you are gonna move at 100 miles an hour for those straight 10 minutes, you're gonna be exhausted. It's gonna force you to kind of pace yourself. And that pacing right there is good. It's good to have some rest because if we are just pushing through with our muscles all the time, they don't get a sense of recovery. And then by that last round, you're gonna feel like you can't even do one squat. So today I'm gonna to be showing you three, I like to call them mini circuits. And this mini circuit is gonna come from the AMRAP type of circuit. So as many rounds as possible. I'm gonna take you through three. The first one's gonna be body weight only. The second one's gonna be resistance band. And that third one is going to be with weights. For that first circuit, it is body weight. So think about, you don't need anything in your house. You literally don't need anything. Resistance training and strength training can be body weight training. It's actively working our muscles and putting impact on our joints in a way that we are intentional about it. So any questions here before we move forward? If you guys, if you get through, if we get through this training and you're like, okay, I want more of these mini circuits. I call them mini circuits. You'll hear me talk about micro habits, mini habits, mini circuits. Everything starts off really small. If you want access to our mini circuit book, just drop mini in the comments 
and I will get you our ebook. It's a super awesome thing. You can print it off. You can put the certain workouts in different places. So you always have access to them. They're all 10 minutes or less. So we're starting with circuit number one, which is that body weight circuit. We have sit to stands or air squats as our first movement. Then we have good mornings. Then we have lap pull downs. We have overhead press and we have plank. So I'm gonna first start with demoing each of them. I'm gonna get any questions. Once you guys feel confident, we'll move on to circuit number two. The other thing that I'm going to tell you is all three of these circuits, how I recommended this is you're gonna do 10 reps of everything. And you'll do 10 reps of everything and you'll repeat this circuit as many times as you can in that 10 minutes. Planking, I know there's no reps in planking. So you're gonna hold for 10 to 30 seconds, your choice. So body weight, we have sit to stands, which is that first. If you are someone who struggles to get up and down out of a chair, this is really where I suggest you be before we start with air squats. I really want that full range of motion if possible. So when we're doing sit to stands, we want knees and toes both pointing out at the same direction. I'm going to lean forward slightly. I'm going to plant my feet into the ground. They are stuck into the ground like concrete. A lot of times what happens is we move and we shift those feet underneath us because it makes it easier to get up. I don't want that. I want a 90 degree bend in my knees, knees and toes both point out the same direction, slightly lean forward, press through those big toes and those heels, stand up, squeeze your glutes. Then you're gonna sit on down and stand up. Like I said, if you are someone who struggles to get up and down off the ground, this move right here is super functional for helping you get up and down off the toilet. Get up and down off of that chair at the kitchen table. Get up and down out of your office, out of your car. This is a move you should be doing every single day if you are struggling with getting up and down out of your chair. If you're like, I got sit to stands down, I'm ready for the progression, you're just gonna move into an air squat. So same exact stance, knees and toes both point out. I'm going to squat on down, stand and squeeze. Biggest thing to remember here is I have a slight lean forward, but my chest is still up. So I'm down and up. A lot of times I see people do this. I don't want my nose to the ground. I want my head up, looking straight ahead. Lower with control, press through that big toe and that heel, squeeze your butt on the way up. So you'll do 10 reps of that. After you've done 10 sit to stands or squats, your choice, you can then move into good mornings. Good mornings is the first progression of a deadlift. So feet forward, hands come behind your back, Feet are right underneath our hips, a slight bend in our knees. I'm going to push my hips back towards the wall behind me. Push my hips back. Once you feel a stretch in the backs of those legs, you're gonna squeeze your butt and stand on up nice and tall. So push those hips back, stand and squeeze. I'm gonna show you from the side now. I want you to see that my legs are not locked out. We want a slight loose bend. Feet underneath us, hands behind. Hands behind keeps that chest up so we don't round our shoulders and roll our body forward. Push those hips back. Feel a little stretch here. Stand and squeeze your butt. Stand and squeeze your butt. Other thing to notice is I'm not rocking onto my heels and bringing my big toes up off the ground. Push through that big toe, push through that heel, stand and squeeze. You'll do 10 good mornings. After you've done 10 good mornings, you'll then move into 10 lap pull downs. I wanna make sure we got no questions on Facebook. Hello, Elena, you're joining, but also need to step out early for nap time. Totally get it. Um, so yeah, keep joining in with us as you are here. Ask any questions that you have as you navigate nap time with the boys. Next one we have is those lap pull downs. So in a perfect world, we'd use a band. But like I said, this is a body weight circuit. So you're gonna stand with your feet underneath you, Hips tucked, belly button, hold the spine. Hands are gonna come up right above you. Then you're gonna drive your elbows down to your sides, squeezing your shoulder blades together. You're gonna come up and squeeze. So this is a really good range of motion, but also back strengthening exercise. And we have 10 of these. Keeping that core nice and tight. And you may think 10 is not that bad. Go for 10 minutes and see how it feels. 
This circuit is not meant for that first round to feel super challenging. It's going to build on each other. Once we've done our lat pull downs, we're going to go to an overhead press. This is a move that you're going to start with before we add weights. Hands come up here. Um, I like to touch my thumbs to my shoulders. Elbows are not all the way forward, but they're not out here. About 45 degrees. You're going to press up and back down. And it's crazy what just moving the weight of our arms will do. It will eventually start to make those shoulders burn. Good. Same thing when it comes to those that pull downs, hips tucked, slight bend in those knees, core nice and tight. Once we have done our overhead press, we will then move into our final movement, which is going to be a plank. In this plank, you can do a variety of ways. My first suggestion is if you are not able to get down to the ground, prop yourself up on a bench, I'm gonna move this, on a bench or a chair. So hands go down underneath your shoulders or even your kitchen counter. Step those legs out, shoulders back and down, body rocked over top of your shoulders, belly button pulled the spine, glutes are nice and tight, and hold. If you are like easy peasy lemon squeezy, take that down to the ground. Same exact concept, hands underneath your shoulders, body rocked forward, up on your toes. The wider your feet, the more stable you're gonna be. The closer your feet, the easy, the harder. So I'm here, body rocked forward, core nice and tight, glutes engaged, quads engaged, and relax. We are going to be performing those for 10 to 30 seconds. If you've never done a plank before, start with that 10 seconds. It will feel like the longest 10 seconds of your life, but it is super important for our core stability. So that is our body weight circuits. And I know some of you have mentioned that, okay, Morgan, you give me these circuits, but I forget the movements. Save this video and always, and you can come back to it. So circuit number one was body weight only. We had our sit to stance or those air squats, 10 reps. We had our good mornings, 10 reps. We had our lat pull downs, 10 reps. We had our overhead presses, 10 reps. And we had our plank for 10 to 30 seconds. Repeat that circuit as many times as you can in that 10 minutes. Your muscles, you will feel them working. You may start to feel a lot of breath, that's okay. It's a good feeling to have. I know sometimes it may not feel like it in the moment, but I promise it is. So let's move on to circuit number two. Circuit number two, we have our resistance bands. And in this circuit, we have four exercises. First one we have with this resistance band is going to be band pull apart. I suggest a resistance band with or without handles does not matter. Um, just kind of depends on what you have. Some of you may have TheraBands at home that are just long without any clips or handles. You can do this with either really. First one is band pull aparts. So I like to wrap the band around my hands so that it's not flopping all over the place because I don't like when it flops. Shoulders back and down, hands are gonna be at our belly button. Out here, I'm not rounded forward reaching. My shoulders are back and down, I have a slight bend in my elbows. I'm now going to pull that band apart so that band then touches my chest and slowly come back. And how I'm moving this band is I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together. Like I have a pencil back there and I want to catch it before it falls. This is a really good strength training exercise to help pull those shoulders back and down and strengthen that upper back. The next one that we have is going to be tricep press downs. So you can either double up your band or you can just take one and loop it over. One hand comes up on your chest, the other elbow locks in. Neither of the elbows move. The bottom hand is going to press straight down and come up, down and up. This is going to be working the back side of that arm. You're going to have 10 of these. Remember to do both sides. Often we forget to do both sides. So 10 tricep press downs. And when you switch, hand comes right up on your chest. Other one grabs the end of the band, down and back up with control. Good. After that, we're going to go into bicep curls for 10. You're going to want to stand on this band and please stand on it all the way to the arch of your foot. Shoulders back and down. 
If your band is really loose, you can do two feet. If it's a tighter band, I suggest one foot. Shoulders back and down, elbows locked in. I'm going to curl and release. The biggest thing to remember here is you don't want to show the tip of my elbows to anybody. So sometimes we get this. I don't want to show the tips of my elbows. The tips of my elbows are mine. Keep them nice and locked in. This is a bicep curl. So that right there is working the front of your arms. I've got some of you who have said, I really want tighter toner arms. Be doing those tricep extend, those tricep kickbacks. Be doing those bicep curls. Be doing these band pull aparts. And that final one here is going to be a chest press. So you're gonna bring this band back behind you here. You're gonna kind of lay it right where your sports bra would sit. And then you're gonna hang on to the ends. Elbows are gonna be right here at your side. 45 degrees away from your body, just like if you were to do a push up or a chest press on the ground. I'm going to press my arms straight out and slow and control come back. Out and in. Out and in. If you find that is really easy, take your resistance band up a little bit if you have multiple, or this is where you can kind of choose if you feel like 10 reps isn't enough for your resistance take it up to 15. i like to do 10 because it's a really good baseline to start at same thing goes if these are feeling more challenging only do eight reps only do six reps 10 is a baseline start with the baseline and you can always move up or down from there so in this resistance band circuit circuit number two you set your timer for 10 minutes you're going to be doing 10 reps of everything we're going to be doing 10 reps of our band pull aparts, 10 reps of our tricep press downs or kickbacks. You'll hear me use that name interchangeably. Make sure you do both sides on those triceps. Then you will do 10 bicep curls and then you'll do 10 chest press with that band right behind you. Shoulders back and down, pressing straight out, coming straight back in. Don't let those elbows flare because if it flares, that band will come up to your neck. It's a really good reminder to keep those elbows down at a 45 degree angle. Any questions on circuit number one or circuit number two? Drop them in the comments, let me know, because we are gonna be moving on to circuit number three, our third and final circuit, and we're gonna need some weights for this. If you don't have weights, grab some soup cans, grab some gallons of water, grab something around your house, as long as each of them are the same weight on each side, because you will be needing two of them. Awesome. So as we move into circuit number three, same concept reply, applies. Set your timer for 10 minutes. After you've set your timer for 10 minutes and it goes off, you are complete. In that section, in that circuit, for your weights, you have five exercises. Weights are something that is going to add challenge. It's gonna be a way to progress. So if you've never done resistance training or strength training, I really suggest starting with circuit number one, which is that body weight circuit. Get comfortable there. Get comfortable with how your body feels and how your body's moving. If you're not comfortable and we can't do a sit to stand or we can't do an air squat without weight, we should not be adding weight to it. So you're gonna grab a set of weights or soup cans or water bottles or laundry soaps, and we're gonna be doing a farmer's carry march. So for a farmer's carry, you're gonna pull your shoulders back and down. You're gonna pull those weights off the body just a little, and we are going to march in place, keeping your core nice and tight. This is a balance and a core exercise, but it is also an upper back, shoulder, and tricep stability exercise. As you can see, I'm bringing my knee up to 90. Maybe you can't get it all the way up to 90, that's okay. You will be doing 10 marches on each leg. So how I usually count is right, left, that's one. Right, left, that's two. Once you have done your farmer's carry, this is one where you may wanna sit and shake your arms out in between. We're gonna move on into a bent over row. You're gonna take your weights, you're gonna bring your feet. I like to either have right underneath my hips or a little bit closer. Totally up to you, whatever feels more comfortable for you. The little bit closer base of support I have, the little bit more comfortable I feel, 
but you choose whether you want a little bit wider or a little closer. I'm going to bring my feet, pull my shoulders back and down, and I'm gonna do just a little bit of a hinge here. So see how I'm not rounded? I'm shoulders back and down. My belly button's pulled to my spine. I now have a slight bend in my elbows, and I'm now going to drive my elbows to the sky. Squeezing my shoulder blades together, and release, up, and release, up, and release, up, and release. Stand on up, squeeze your glutes as you stand. Imagine you're finishing a good morning. Those are your bent over rows. After that, we have tricep kickbacks. These are very similar to those tricep press downs that we did with those resistance band, but instead of standing up, we're gonna be in a hinge position. So we're gonna set up kind of like we just did for that bent over row. Feet can either be a little closer or right underneath your hips, up to you. Bringing our feet together, push those hips back. So now I'm set up for a bent over row. The only difference is I'm now gonna bring my elbows up to 90. So my elbows are at 90 here. Elbows lock in, imagine you have a bar from one elbow to the next. And I'm gonna press that weight back behind in a straight line and come through. This is gonna work the back side of those arms or those triceps. Good. Once we've done those, you can stand on up, shake those arms out. From here, we have our last two exercises of the circuit. And in 10 minutes, you may only get two rounds. You may only get three rounds done if you're using weight. And that's okay. We just want 10 minutes of intentional strength training a day. Just 10 minutes. Next one we have is going to be deadlifts. So we did that good morning in our circuit number one. Deadlifts are just a progression of a good morning. So if good mornings were super uncomfortable and you were feeling pain in your back, do not move on to a deadlift. Contact me and we will get that good morning feeling good before we add your weights. When we are doing a deadlift, weight stays nice and close. The closer that weight can stay to you, the easier it's gonna to be to move. Feet underneath your hips, shoulders back and down, slight bend in our elbows. I'm going to keep that weight nice and close. I kind of like to just run that weight down my thighs. As I push those hips back, weights come to about my knees. I feel a stretch in the back of my hamstrings, and then I stand and squeeze. So I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see the motion. Shoulders back and down, push those hips back. Good, good, good. A little bit of stretch in the back of the legs. Stand and squeeze. See how I have a nice straight line from my head to my tailbone. Good. Like I said, if that good morning did not feel good and, you, and you're like, my form's not great, send me a message. Let's get that good morning form good and complete before we move you on to a deadlift. I am all about form and safety here. So if there's something that doesn't feel right, don't do it. Ask me for help. I will give you all the help and guidance that I can. Our final movement here is going to be a squat. Same concept applies. If we cannot do an air squat, Without weight, we are not going to be doing an air squat with weight. But if you are ready to progress, I like to hold the weight this way and I like to lock it in on my chest, elbows down nice and close. Nice form, knees and toes both point the same way. I've got long legs, so I have a wider stance. Maybe you have a little bit narrower. Biggest thing is we don't want those knees to tip in. We want to press them out. I'm now going to sit on down like I'm in a chair, keeping my chest up, stand and squeeze. Turn to the side. See how I have a slight lean forward, but I'm not down here. We're not doing a good morning, we're doing a squat. So that is circuit number three. Circuit number three, we had that farmer's carry march. We had those bent over rows, tricep kickbacks, squats and deadlifts. 10 reps of everything. See how many times you can get it complete in that 10 minutes. What questions do we have on circuit number one, circuit number two, or circuit number three, either individually or as a whole? Okay. So some of you may also be thinking right now, Morgan, I, just, I can't even do 10 minutes. Fine, start with five minutes. Pick a circuit, 
Set your timer for five minutes, go through as many times as you can. I can almost guarantee you guys can all at least do five minutes. I know you can. It's about planning and scheduling just that five minutes into maybe it's right when you wake up. Maybe it's right after you get the kids down for a nap. Maybe it's right when you get home from work. Find that spot in your day that you can make it consistent each and every day. We've got people in this group who as soon as they get out of bed, they put on their clothes, they go to the living room, they do the thing for five, 10, even 15 minutes, that's it. It doesn't have to be this long production. Strength training can be this micro habit that you add each and every day. I want you to feel strong. I want you to feel powerful. I want you to see the benefits and really feel the benefits that happen when you focus on strength training. So that being said, I also like to do in these groups, um, those of you who've been around for a while, you know this. Those of you who are new, I like to know what was your insight and takeaway from today? At the beginning of the call, I encourage you to pick one thing that you are gonna learn and implement. What is that one thing you are learning and implementing from today's call? Put it in the chat. I will follow up with you. I want to hold you accountable. I want to see you reach your goals. I want you to have results. I want you to lose that weight. I want you to get stronger. I want you to have those things. And it's hard for me to help you if you don't drop your commitments and I can follow up with you. So drop your insights and takeaways and what kind of stuck to you like glue. And as a reminder, I do have a full mini circuit ebook. You can print it off, you can keep it digital, whatever works for you. Um, but if you want access to that mini book, I will send it right to you um, via Facebook Messenger. Just drop mini in the comments. It's completely free, I will send it to you. It's got a bunch of 10 minutes or less mini circuits in there. And they're all for strength training. So I will see you all next week. Have a fantastic weekend. We have a bunch of new people in this group. I'm excited to have you guys here and to meet the people who have been here for a while. Be on the lookout for the In Case You Missed It email on Saturday. There's gonna be a lot of it. There's a lot, there's gonna be a lot of it this week. Usually I try to keep it short and concise. It's gonna be a lot. And that's because we had a vision training this week. We had a four pillars framework this week and we had this training. And I don't want you to miss any of it. I want you to take time to just re-listen. You don't have to watch, just re-listen. So you know where this is grooming, go where this group is going and how you can be the most effective and have the best results. So I will see you all next Thursday. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next week.